Welcome back to Indianomics. We have been discussing whether solar power can become as common as the cell phone, actually. Uh, my guests are the Secretary in the Central Ministry of uh, Renewable Power, Mr. Upendra Tripathi, Suman Sinha, the CEO and Chairman of uh, Renew Power, a company that offers wind and uh, solar solutions, and uh, uh, Mr. Arvind Kumar, the Energy Secretary of the State of Telangana. Uh, uh, Suman, when you set up solar panels in buildings, uh, Technically, even the windows and doors can be made of uh, PV cells. Is there something that municipalities can do in, in terms of offering incentives for uh, new construction or, or uh, buildings to get into solar power or disin disincentivize people from depending on the grid? I think today we don't have any transparent solar panels. And so you can't really install solar panels on windows and, and generate power from that. I think that will happen at some point in the future. I'm, I'm sure somebody is already researching that area and we'll probably start having full glass facades coming out of solar panels and that will, I think, also have its own sort of revolution. As far as the current opportunities are concerned, you can actually put solar panels only on rooftops, provided that the facing and so on is right. But the problem is the cost that most residential customers pay in India for their power is a little bit subsidized and so they're paying typically 3 rupees to 4 rupees, 4.50. And as I said earlier, the cost of installing a solar rooftop for residential customers is about 650 or thereabouts. So the economic viability for residential customers is not yet there. It will come about, I think, in the next, let's say, two, three years' time. Um, and the question is, what can the government do right now to incentivize and bridge this gap? So one of the things I think the government can very easily do is that if somebody installs a solar panel and spends, let's say, 5 lakh or 10 lakh rupees doing that, perhaps the government can give that person an income tax break on that money. And that itself will, for, exa for example, reduce the cost of that solar capex by 30 percent, right, at the marginal tax rate. And that will then immediately bridge that gap and uh, immediately lead to much more installation of solar panels. The second thing is that you need to have net metering because in the daytime, in the peak time, I may produce more power than I actually consume because I may be at work, my kids may be in school, etc. In which case, I need to be able to feed that extra power into the grid and therefore I need to have a net metering system where if I feed power into the grid, the grid actually pays me for the excess power that I supply into it. So that's the second thing that is happening, but certainly those policies have to come into some better alignment so that it becomes more economically viable. And the third thing that needs to happen really uh, in terms of doing all of this is that certain business models have to come into play such that there are many installers that set up. So just like you have people who come in, come in and set up ACs in your house, you need to have a whole ecosystem of people who can just come in and set up solar panels in your house. And then that ecosystem will start developing and start, will start getting financed as well. well uh, Mr. Tripathi, uh, what can be uh, tax incentives that the government is already thinking uh, or uh, uh, can contemplate to make both uh, 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 solar uh, uh, parks as well as rooftop, rooftop solar power generation more viable? Yes, uh, Lata, in fact, out of 100,000 megawatt, uh, 40,000 megawatt by 2022, we are planning uh, to bring on the rooftop. Because, uh, number one, it doesn't require uh, transmission, new transmission lines to be uh, built. There is no transmission loss in the rooftop because it's very close to the grid. And uh, uh, number three, it is also, you know, more green power. It is a tax-free income type. There is no transmission loss. Now, uh, you know, just take the example of uh, Delhi Metro, for example. They have gone in a very large way for rooftop. It is because, you know, prior to having rooftop, they are paying around 9 rupees for uh, electricity per unit. Now they have got uh, for 6 rupees per unit and that is why they are planning to put 500 megawatt even outside and bring their solar power into Delhi. Now in rooftop if you go to other areas, we have around 60 cities, you know, which where we give a lot of emphasis to rooftop. There are 16 states almost now who have brought in the net metering rules. For example, in Karnataka, if you have a you know, rooftop solar and you sell it to the grid, you know, you will get 9 rupees per unit, which is much more than what you pay. And uh, in Gurgaon, for example, they have brought a rule that, you know, any new house you built beyond a size, the rooftop is compulsory. And we have written to most of the state governments to make some clause where both incentive in terms of, you know, electricity tax reduction or disincentive in terms of compulsion will be put in. And most states have been very uh, progressive in this. Some are giving new FAR for uh, solar tops. And uh, we find that uh, a lot of demand is coming for rooftop, not only, you know, because they have uh, they save costs, but also it helps in stabilizing the nearby grid. 
and uh, it, it helps when there is outages uh, in schools, in hostels. In terms of tax incentives, yes. Now, number one, the Ministry of Finance has issued a circular to all the banks that whenever they take rooftop, this loan for rooftop will be a part of the housing loan if it is a new house. And if it is an old house, it will be a home improvement loan. It will come under priority sector lending and the interest rate will be less like the home loan. And uh, this apart, uh, apart from bringing the priority sector, all the banks are now requesting to earmark a particular you know, uh, percentage of their credit, which will be earmarked towards popularizing rooftop and uh, solar. That apart, we are also going from state to state, okay. creating an awareness about the environmental yeah. benefit yes. of rooftop. Mr. Ripati, actually, since, all the, things put together. Yes, since yes. the state representative is already here, uh, let me ask the energy secretary to wind up this discussion. Uh, What's uh, 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 looking like uh, Telangana can offer and uh, uh, make uh, solar power more attractive? Uh, <clears throat> on this solar rooftop, I must admit that we have gone ahead and as Suman says, that new models are to be worked out. So in phase one, we have surveyed all government buildings and PSUs in Hyderabad city. And we have got an area of about 5 million square SFT, okay. which we are going ahead in reverse bidding model. So idea is to make it attractive for the bidder also to put solar rooftops. So instead of individual households putting where cost economics often doesn't work out, we have compiled all the uh, available rooftop under government buildings into one single bid and we are going ahead with 5 million square feet of solar rooftop and we are likely to get very good rates. So it's being worked out and bid will be out very soon. Second point I just want to mention here is that various discoms, distribution companies, there has to be a model which is acceptable to them because what's happening is the moment individual rooftop owner gets a solar rooftop at a cost lower than what he is paying, he wants to shift to solar rooftop. Whereas discom, they are losing their prime customers which often cross subsidizes their mm. low cost customers. So there has to be a model which is workable, which is acceptable and then in the long run that's where the solution lies. And I think uh, solar rooftop in Hyderabad after phase one of government buildings, next phase depending upon the rate which we are getting, will be uh, targeting private institution and th third phase will be private individual rooftops where we are saying please give us your rooftop, we will go for a single bidding where rates will come down and under net metering they will ultimately benefit. Okay, uh, Mr. Tripathi, uh, uh, Mr. Arvind Kumar, Suman, thank you very much for joining me in this discussion. Uh, uh, well, Suman began this discussion by telling us that uh, if 4.63 is not yet the most viable uh, cost, uh, that it is an ambitious costing of solar power. But uh, he added, uh, he uh, uh, caveated it by saying that perhaps in the next 10 years, we are going to see the costs fall by probably 30 to 40 percent and at that time solar power will be way more competitive than non-renewable power. Uh, 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 the two bureaucrats we have with us uh, have given us a string of tax incentives and commercial incentives that will make uh, solar power way more uh, ubiquitously available and uh, more uh, cheaply available across cities. It looks like 10 years from now, we will be talking about the rooftop solar taking it for granted like we take the mobile phone for granted today. And if uh, that will mean a time when politicians no longer will be able to attract uh, votes by offering cheap power, when theft of power from the grid will not be a reality, it does look like 10 years down the line, electricity in India is uh, in for some very, very good times. Thank you, gentlemen, for joining me in this conversation.